Hello and welcome to the Feels Good Podcast. I'm Amanda Cerny and I have Jacqueline Fernandez and we also have a very special guest with us today. And instead of our feel good stories, we have amazing feels good guests with us. And Jacqueline, I'll let you do the intro. Woohoo! Okay, I am so super excited to introduce our first celebrity guest on our show. You are our first guest. You are our first wow. guest. Oh. Okay, hello. <laughs> yes. Um, so this is really exciting. It's an exciting time as well. We are celebrating Vivali. Uh, so it's a super special time for us. And Seth needs no introduction. He is a national award winner, one of our most loved celebrity, one of our most loved stars, actors, producers. Um, he is, you're, you're a Padma Shri winner. Yes. Uh, he comes from this really beautiful family of royalty. He's a Patel. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I have to make sure everything is right. Yeah, um, you, you're um, looking at him for approval. You're like, yes. Wait, wait yes. I'm super ex- Okay, the, the thing is about Seth, I have to tell you, before I came into, before I came to India, before I came to Bollywood, my favorite actor from India was Seth. No. I swear <laughs> to God. I swear to God. Like there was... I would like see your films. Like he has some of the most iconic films, the most iconic characters. Um, and for me, like Seth is like this, like especially when I came as well, I couldn't believe I had this opportunity to work with you. And now it's our second film together as well. Um, such a super cool guy, apart from being this brilliant actor. Uh, he's just like super suave. Like to me, he's like the super suave, super chic really intelligent, reads a lot of books, oh, yeah. not like my fake reading, uh, which we discussed the other day. <laughs> I fake read a lot. <laughs> What's fake reading? Oh, fake reading is when you have a book and then like you get through like three pages and then you like- You forget to turn the page. <laughs> and then you put it away and you come back to it after four months. And, and then, then you, you post to about it and you're like, just read this you awesome book. Like, I love this book. And then yeah. like, you feel so like, I mean, divine when you've read like those five pages and well, then- better than no pages, I see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. I have loads of books and a lot of them I've gone through, but like a lot of them are just like half written and, or half read. Right? Yeah. That's exactly the same as me. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them are half I'm not supposed to read everything. Really? No. I thought when you, you, pick, you pick up a book, you're supposed to... Well, I mean, you know, I've failed often, and sometimes you get through it. Well, um, yeah. And then you keep it. I mean, I, I kind of have books that I think would be really interesting to read, um, and I haven't read them all, but I plan to. Well, you know, it's That's kind of like... my plan It's like also. sometimes we don't always make it through. Yeah. yeah. Good plan. We yeah. don't always make it through a film, right? So it's like, sometimes you just don't, maybe you don't really enjoy the book that you're reading and you're like, okay. You know, I heard a really nice Spanish writer say something amazing about books where um, he used to travel a lot as a kid because his father was a diplomat. Mm-hmm. And he used to start feeling a little insecure going to um, various places that he didn't recognize. Uh, but he took his books with him and he took about five or six classics or whatever he liked because he knew that on such and such page, this would happen. Wow. And that gave him a sense of security and a sense of, you know, uh, wherever he is in the world, it'd take him to a new hotel or a new house. He knows on page 65, you know, this is what's going to happen with Don Quixote or with Pinocchio. Or with <laughs> he enjoyed that security. Wow, yeah. So um, the book's too. Comforting. Yeah, well, it's comforting. It is. Mm-hmm. And there's a beautiful book place. So we are shooting for a film right now in Dharamshala. And there is, I don't know if you saw it on the, way here there's this quaint little bookstore no i didn't oh but i like the town it's amazing i want to go for a walk amanda you're invited to yeah. adding it to the list of places <laughs> i'm going with jacqueline yeah we've already planned like, some seven movies to visit but this is go. this should be one of them for sure yeah that i'm sure is so special and like so yeah on the way here in the market i saw this really quaint bookstore and all i could think about was like oh my god seth is gonna love what books did you carry with you on this trip I've carried a couple of ghost story books. The Oxford Book of Ghost Stories, the best collection of ghost stories ever. Wow. It's from, it starts in, you know, the, one of the early ghost stories is written in about 1600 and something. Um, oh. And it goes on till about now. So the, the editor has collected how the ghost story has changed and evolved over the years. Wow. And it's to do with technology. I think when people started inventing the radio and you could hear voices um, from far away, then people started thinking maybe you can hear voices from other dimensions or things like oh, that so I'm, it's, it's fascinating stuff how it so ghost yeah. story books a couple of those and um there's one by a 
a kind of a psychiatrist called M. Scott Peck called Further Down the Road, Less Traveled, which I think helps people. <laughs> well, I shouldn't laugh. It's, it's, but it's nice. It's nice to get some yeah, paternal it's kind really of advice. It's really funny that you are reading about ghost stories. While shooting. Go- yeah, because we are actually making a horror. I've got a couple of books on acting. Oh, you are. It is. You. Guess what? Guess who he's reading? Ivana Chubuk. Yeah. So she's also yeah, yeah. trained under her. Fantastic, really nice book to read. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else I think? Oh yeah, I've got the Decameron, which is Boccaccio's old book. It's like Chaucer's precursor to the Canterbury Tales, written during a pandemic as well, actually. Pandemic, the um, pandemic. <laughs> and uh, what else? And, and John Dryden's translation of the Aeneid, oh which is God. the story of Aeneas and Troy, you know, escaping from the burning of Troy and setting up the Roman Empire in... Wow, Italy. I find that so interesting, though. That's I just don't know where you're getting the time to read all these books. Well, like I, I said, I'm, I'm not all the time. I I'm feeling sometimes. so bad right now but because I'm like, yeah, my list. The, uh, the thing is, I know exactly where they are and I know that these are the books that are in my room and if I find myself a little true. bored or lost, I can entertain always myself hurt. in various ways. Yeah, actually, I think that's the yeah. best thing about books. Like I always, car- like I said, like I am a fake reader, so I always make sure I carry a bunch of books with me. Like right now I have so a book called, I'm, oh, it's such a great book, but I'm still halfway through. It's called A Female Brain. Okay, nice. Ooh, but it is so interesting because it talks about like I keep you know ranting on about this how like we're all about evolution and we're all about reproduction and we're all about like survival like even so yeah I feel like our emotions as well are all just like manipulated because it's all about us just surviving and reproducing and uh, so anyways though the female brain goes into like so many so many reasons like women do the things that they do and right. how we're structured, how we're made, to how reproduce. we're formed. No, just in, like, yeah, to reproduce, um, how our moods happen, how we grow up, when we're kids, what happened to us, when, you know, so it's like just our formation, how we're so, how we all are actually so different from men. Um, yeah, and just like, so it's a super interesting book. I can't wait to get to the end. I don't know I how long that's going to take. A lot of men should read that book. Online um, about Buddhism and uh, psychology. Wow. Which was something similar to what you're saying about um, saying how we're conditioned a certain way from the beginning of kind yeah. of time. And, you know, evolution, has, I mean, the idea is to kind of fight against our natural instincts, um, you know, which are basically to reproduce. Exactly. So, but that's not socially acceptable all the time to kind of yeah, reproduce. I know. <laughs> everyone, everyone, which gets us in lots of trouble most of the time. You know? But that's it's, what the, it is. it's the most now natural thing yeah. like <laughs> mm-hmm. you know so yeah we, we, we had a bit of a chat this morning about that Amanda came up with a fun fact the best the time well yeah the best time to reproduce is it's after a workout it's in the morning what after a workout, <laughs> after <laughs> after a workout. workout. I, I thought morning time too I was like oh for sure it's the morning you know jump start the day and then no yeah. Yeah. after after a workout yeah. when you're all after workout, when you're pumped nice, up and right? the blood is flowing Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really great discussion point. We had. Yes. <laughs> um, so, but, Amanda, we are having Diwali. Yeah, and time. happy Diwali to the both yes, of you, to everyone. Diwali. Yeah, I know. It's like I'm like celebrating on my own over here in, uh, in LA, but I'm sure a bunch of other people are celebrating too. Um, <laughs> Well, I know for, well, for those of you who don't know, Diwali is a five-day Hindu celebration known as the Festival of Lights. It celebrates the victory of good over evil, light over darkness, and I love that so much, and knowledge yeah. over ignorance, which preach is very important and is celebrated by billions of Hindus, Sikhs, and Jains across the world. So, so awesome. <laughs> what did you- a, Yeah. Seth's family is actually flying in. They're going to be here like in a few hours. Yes, they've flown in. They're driving up now. Oh, they're driving up now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yay, like his gonna... son is so super cute. I can't wait to see him. You should interview him. Oh my gosh. He is so fun. hilarious. He's like four years old and he's just like the cutest, cutest thing. Seth, what is like the one thing you've learned from Tamar? Like what is like something? Or... I think, kind, you know, he's incredibly kind. And he's much kinder than um, sometimes I, I, I mean, I try and be kind, but he's m- more patient and kinder than I am. Um, he's very, I mean, he's just very warm to all the people who work with us. Um, 
and everyone we meet in our lives. He's constantly watching and, and uh, he's learned by example. If, if I say something in even a slightly off tone, he says, you know, Abba, you can be nicer than that. Or oh, wow. Like that. Yeah, so he's quite, he's a bit of a, you know, um, parent to me in that sense where we both correct each other if we step out of line, which I think I is I cool. love that. Yeah, oh, that's great though. I think there is so much to learn from kids. Yeah. yeah. And you have another one on the way. Yes. Oh. <laughs> How does yeah. that, can you, I'm, can you I'm break down exactly. your whole, your family mm-hmm. for everybody listening that doesn't know? Just like, it's so interesting. Like yeah. how everybody's in entertainment and it's just like you, you're well, yeah, from- my mother, my mother is an actor and uh, my, so my mother's family is from the Tagore family and uh, my great grand uncle was Ravindranath Tagore who was a you know, Nobel laureate and he won a Nobel prize. And I think he, in, and he was knighted by the British as well, but he gave both those things back um, after at atrocities committed by um, the colonial British ruling India who were, you know, shooting people and things like this. So he said he kind of returned the knighthood. Wow. Um, so, so there, a lot of them were artists, um, you know, uh, the Tagores, like great painters and poets and things like this. So my mother's from that kind of thing. She's been doing films since she was 16. Um, she worked with Sachidit Ray a lot, um, who's a very famous Indian director. Um, and uh, so worked with him when she was 16 and did about four or five movies. I think she was his muse in, in many ways. He kind of thought of her as the ultimate female uh, representation of his art. So there was that. And um, then my sister's in, in kind of movies and, you know, my wife um, yeah. and uh, so my, my ex-wife as well. Um, so all of us, like everyone, and my daughter, all of them. yeah, and, and and you know, my son, elder son, wants to be an actor, and I think then we will be an actor for sure. He's <laughs> entertaining us already. Yeah, we know um, from now already. And, and he's so kind. All, all they're, super they're, talented. They're just all into movies. They're all, all like, super I mean, talented. It is a wonderful profession, you know. So, so that means you knew you wanted to be an actor. No, I was a big mess. I did, but also my father <laughs> was a cricket. He's from a completely different um, field, yeah. Different field and a different upbringing. Like, like um, Jacqueline said that, I mean, they used to be sort of ruling princes and had a whole different set of ideas. And uh, acting on front of a camera wasn't necessarily something that came very naturally to that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so there was there were some pulls in different directions, and I didn't know where I wanted to go or what I was capable of. And I was sent to a very academic school in my father's footsteps, and that didn't go precisely. Nicely as planned. I think the idea was I'd become a lawyer or a doctor or something. And our generation in Delhi growing up in the 80s, um, work, I think we're the first people in India really to say, okay, we don't want to become doctors or lawyers or kind of engineers or these safe jobs that you're trying to give us. Um, and we'd rather be some kind of artist, a lot of dress designers like, you know, Rohit Pal and um, all these guys, we used to party together when we were 17, 18, and they were already starting to do these amazing things. Um, so it was never going to be something regular. But it was a bit, it was a bit worrying for my parents when I was 18, 19, because I knew it wasn't going to be a nine to five job. And when films came along, that sounded like a really exciting thing, but it's something I was kind of kept away from growing up. It wasn't. Did you watch like all your mom's films? No, none. I watched one and then she was wearing the same outfit that she wore at home because I think it was a low budget film and she'd worn her own clothes um, to kind of help them out. And then she was crying a lot because the films were very melodramatic. Um, And you are much like Italian movies, you're either playing, you know, I mean, I think she was playing a, uh, um, some kind of a, a sex worker or wow. a player who was, had been abused and lost her fans. So it was traumatizing. Mm-hmm. It was called Mossam. And she was smoking and she was drinking and losing her mind and crying. And How old this. were you? I was very young. I was, um, you know, in my, I was about six or seven. And anyway, I started crying. And then I didn't watch Hindi films because I thought they're too... Melodramatic. They're too, yeah, emotionally sort of... Draining. Dr- yeah. <laughs> Or melodramatic. And, and really long. Really long. They used to be really long. And you could hear them through the house, you know. It's <laughs> usually this mother crying. Yeah. And the background music playing. <laughs> so I remember this, like, growing up in Bahrain. Um, so, like, every... Because there was no cable, there was just, like, the local television. So, you just watched whatever they, you know, they gave and you. And this is in India. So, there was Durdarshan. There was Dur- only yeah. two movies. Oh, there's a movie on Saturday and that was it. Yes. So, we only had... We had Hindi films every Wednesday night. They used to play Hindi. But I remember 
where the slot was from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. And they filled up the whole, like, it was like, they were really, really long. It's like Gone with the Wind, uh, the Ten Commandments type of like, yeah. like the length was really, really long. Now, of mm. course, we've like downsized. Well, life's changed, hasn't it? I mean, I, I, I think the idea is still, I, I, it's interesting how things tie up together. I think in India, sometimes, unless you're here, it's difficult to go out. I mean, you don't really we hear of a family taking their kids out and feeding the ducks or kind of going yeah. for a walk. So going to the yes, movies geez. is really kind of the only family outing. So yeah. mm. sometimes there used to be a bit longer. There was no kind of rock and roll industry or music industry. Um, so a few years ago, you get everything from the movie, whether it was music, whether it was your rock star, whether it was your poet. So yeah. all those different um, types of art, um, which you can actually find in different places normally were found in one movie. So it's probably stretched a bit long as well. So yeah. you get a full day out of it. Uh, yeah, that's true. A whole outing. Yeah. But so there's, or sorry, you go ahead, man. Oh no, it's fine. Um, I mean, that's, that's so interesting. That it's kind of something that you fell into and you decided on your own. Like there was no really, obviously you're surrounded by actors, super talented actors, your whole family, but and then you deciding, okay, well, or your mother at least, and then you deciding at what point were you like, okay, this is the route I'm going to take. This is what I'm going to do. And did you have kind of a leg up? Um, after somebody's put some money on you for whatever reason, I mean, a producer generally will think if he can possibly sell an idea and if it helps him, you try and sell it. But nobody's going to put, you know, good money after bad. I mean, if something goes wrong, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you lose and then nobody's going to, I mean, much. a brother won't support a brother beyond a point, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I, I've started saying, you know, blood is thicker than water, but film is thicker than blood. Um, <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you lose your family over it. That's over a t-shirt that. option. So like yeah. we keep, we keep looking at it. Good. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing, writing, writing it down. Film is thicker than blood. Man. Film is thicker than blood. <laughs> <Absolutely>. We like it. <laughs> I like that Seth, one. That one's yeah. like edgy. Yeah. That one's yeah. good. Yes. We needed that. <laughs> but you're, you're not on social media, right? Like you, no. I haven't seen, I was like, all right, let me check out all of his socials and stuff. And I'm like, he's, he's off the grid. Where I is mean, there's he? Couple of things, really. There's articles just, for I, days about you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess I'm a little old fashioned in the sense that I like doing press the way we're doing it now. Uh, yeah. Where you talk to someone and do it. I mean, it's fine. I would do it, but I just think it would distract me from, I went for a nice walk today. And I was looking at this church at the bottom of this hill and it's beautiful. And I thought I tried to take a picture of it and I, I started photographing it, but I stopped enjoying the church. Mm -hmm. So I thought I can't do both. You know, um, it's better for me to experience things and just talk to people and do the, uh, you know, just li live the life I'm living in, in the way I am. But I think it's great that other people do it because I like to look at what other people are up to. And I like to look at the world through their eyes. And it's really nice. It's no judgment. I mean, it's unfortunate that we can't be just original in our thoughts sometimes. And yeah. you, you, you're always made to feel that if you're not doing it, there's either something wrong with you or something wrong with the person who is doing it. It's nothing like that. It's just, you know, it's I'm, just... I'm almost more. kind of envious right now. Yeah. Like, because the, like social media, when it started for, for me, it was, I think this was six years ago, maybe I got onto Instagram and it was just this really, really fun thing, this fun platform to upload your pictures and, mm -hmm. and aesthetic. It was like for photographers, actually. And I was like, oh my God, like I want to be this, you know, like everything just like this. It was a very cool God, thing to do. That's picture. so tr That's so true. I totally forgot that it didn't it, have yeah. video. Right exactly. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have any of that it was just yeah. beautiful aesthetic pictures and I remember like putting up sunsets putting up like you know chai and afternoon chai and then it just it just you know became it grew into something that almost became you know beyond our control a lot of people's control um I mean it has a really ugly side to it as well and and people keep bringing up my wife and saying can you post this and can you do that and I think uh, that's a bit intrusive no I'm they must be asking you you have so many it's so funny followers. two two years or three years into social media because it became this huge phenomena so like but then I exactly I started feeling the intrusion I started feeling people like hanging on you know or people just wanting that one post or people just wanting that one picture on your platform and then everything just became kind of like disillusioned and like fake and inauthentic and and I I, I was getting like pretty like stressed by it and now I 
like, I think I have found my balance where I know, like, yeah. I'm my sure. phone's quite Instagram. I mean, Instagram worthy. I love taking pictures. Oh, I know. Of things. You, you should know, make I'm a really book. I love. Maybe I don't know. There Maybe we go. Up one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, uh, coffee yeah, table. You were doing your book. But someone asked me to do a book, and I'm kind of, I might chicken out because Why? I was just thinking. Because it's too much work to do it properly. And then you have to be very honest as well, which probably will disturb quite a few people. <laughs> but don't you think that's what we need right now? Yeah, but no, I don't know. I honestly don't know if I am prepared to put myself through the 100% abuse that's going to come my way. I don't think, I'm, I'm really sorry to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't think the general audience, and not the general, but there's just too much, there will be a section of audience that's so negative in India yeah. that I don't want to share my life and talk about things um, because actually I haven't even told the publishers that I'm thinking of not doing it. <laughs> we've, start, we've started doing it. Maybe I'll carry well, doing it. Maybe I won't. But I I'll tell that. you something. I'll tell you because when I was walking today, part of the book should describe what I was feeling and thinking yeah. and looking at these trees and thinking how lucky we are to be shooting in Himachal and you know, all this. And it's not really because... So why has it become... So basically, me and Amanda started this podcast because during quarantine, we realized how negative the world had become. And obviously, there was... It was this, this really crazy situation. People were losing jobs. There was just, you know, uh, people stress frustrated. Yeah. yeah, stressed. A lot, a lot of that stuff. So we decided to make this podcast called The Feels Good Podcast. We're like, we will only discuss really positive things and... Like so, we we pick up like positive news from around the world, like random stuff. We pick up like really weird fun facts. So that's cool because and and your your media book, is really yeah. negative. Oh my god! Yeah, like okay. I mean, you you turn on so the my news. book is one of the positives. Yeah, but again, my I'm sorry to bring Neg- in the negative, but don't bring in the negative. <laughs> okay, fine. It's a part so, of I'm it. Okay, though. Like, okay, let's, let's have... rephrase this. Let me rephrase <laughs> this. I'm saying uh, yes. I think I'll have to work hard to find the right balance between you know artistic description inner kind of dialogue about what one feels and to re- to kind of decide how personal you want to get. And, yeah. uh, and that's the thing. And I think it could be a really good platform to kind of, you know, share some experiences. You know, there's so mm-hmm. many people as well that actually want to just like read your thoughts and, and, yeah. and, le- and learn a little bit from you and about you. And it's just like your memoirs. And I think it's just, it's just, you know, certain things are just lost if you don't, write them down absolutely and you have kids as well so yeah. they can always like i mean it's something they can <laughs> I, have like, a, I have a friend actually it's a good argument. i have a friend of mine who said yes i've been busy writing my memoirs my kids come in and say what are you doing and he says no no listen you'll thank me one day but they have, he hasn't spent any time with them for <laughs> I, I, think, I think he's trying to get for himself this is pretending that <laughs> so for you, my children. this is the key to your future like, that's his social that. media <laughs> It's quite his easy mem- to kind of delude yourself. Right? His yeah, memoirs I mean, is his social media, his version. Yeah. <laughs> it's like his yeah. notepad. But I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to try and do it properly. And just, yeah, and, in a uh, different way. In but I think it'll, it's gonna, it can't be done easily. I mean, they had an idea where I just kind of narrated to a writer and then we run through various topics. But I think it, it, it'll require some effort sitting down and thinking and writing and coming from the heart. It maybe, can't just be an interview. Yeah, it's Seth, you got to be raw. Maybe it's oh. your life through your pictures. It could be. You know. my, my wife made a really moving film for me, uh, cut to some of our you know, favorite songs. So she had like, what things I missed the most by Steely Dan. And she cut um, 50 years of my life in pictures, starting <laughs> off with me, like in my father's arms. Wow. And, That's you know, a lot of work. With, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know her man still exists. Yeah, I, I think she hired an agency to help. But she cut <laughs> the pictures and directed the whole thing, which was also... That's a huge effort as well. But it was yeah. so moving. Aww. It was so moving. I was like very close to tears. If I, if I wasn't sociopathically unempathetic, I would have cried. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> my sister cried it wasn't about her oh, <laughs> she's, like, she's like why aren't you crying <laughs> well, how, how do you get well, yourself to cry in your films I, I well you know I stick something in my eye and sort of yeah, think just, about losing cool something pain. I love <laughs> no well you know I, I can fake it a bit but it's not my it doesn't come to me as easily as it comes to some people no, I've, crying made, is difficult. I've made these blocks so I find it difficult to get around them. I can laugh quite easily um, yeah. I think it's the damage of boarding school <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like just like kind of like well it kind of toughens you up but it also well, I, I don't know if toughen up means block emotionally 
I think it could be oh, that as well. Of course. That's and, a tough and maybe like in, in boarding school, are you guys means. like afraid to cry? No, no. Um, actually, we went to a very liberal boarding school as far as English boarding schools go. Because, you know, 20 years before that, there was caning and a system called fagging, which might not sound the same. <laughs> that might not sound the same. What happened when the, the prefect shouts, fag! fag! And all the junior boys come running. And the last guy to arrive gets the dirty job. No. And he has to say, go and clean my shoes and make sure they're shiny. Why was it called I'm fagging? Going to beat you. Yeah, okay. what, what was the name? <laughs> that was mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then, are your kids being homeschooled? Just mean different things. That's true. You should make a list of those. <laughs> that's in your book. <laughs> yeah, I could, things, could I've, things I've, I've observed. Yeah. There's many different names. names. From <laughs> There's many I can't know. Have you have you created? I mean, you're producing, which is amazing. Like, when did you start getting into producing alongside well, acting? It's, it's, you know, when I joined the movies, there was a system in place where the big, powerful filmmakers would be making these movies, yeah. and and you probably wouldn't get paid much to be yeah. doing their movies because it was an honor and a privilege. Because these movies are going to be really well made, and they'll probably do well, and then you make your money elsewhere. That was mm-hmm. the idea. Um, but when actually Kishore Lula of Eros uh, Entertainment came to town, he was a big, he had big ideas. And what he did was he kind of gave some of us who were doing all right in movies and some who were doing obviously very well. I was doing all right. And he said, why don't you make your own movie? And I'll give you the money. Let's cut out the middleman. Um, I'll distribute it. You put it together. Wow. And think like, you know, Shah Rukh is thinking, for example. So he gave us lots of money and we started doing it ourselves. So we formed a company financed by somebody else, um, which is great, but it's not as gutsy as really putting your own money in because then you really, then you really own the the show. But you know, I find that so difficult for an actor. Like when you are acting in a film that you're also financing, putting your money in, like I feel it would, like, you know, like we go into films right now, we're just go in there, we act, we do this, yeah. we do a couple. But like when you know, like, wait a minute, the money's going here, this is, I don't know if like that would compromise no, it. It would compromise. I mean, it's not easy because, you know, an actor's used to certain kind of uh, perks and a certain way of working and there's demands on you, but there's also, you know, you can relax. So you, you're used to yeah. living a certain way. If you were a producer and you'd be getting calls saying, you know, why is my bedroom not cold yeah. or warm or whatever. Exactly. And that, you know, you haven't signed on for your like, sorry, <laughs> why are you calling I'm like me? reading my script, yeah, I learned my lines for so, yeah. so The magic of a movie is when everyone comes together and does their bit. Yeah, I agree. You know, the actor does his bit and the producer does his bit. And they're all different, very different parts to this whole. I know. The director too and all that, you know. I, I think production is super difficult. Like, well, it's an art and it's a very creative field and it's not necessarily just money, you know. Yeah, um, but it is a business. It is a business. Well, yeah. yeah, it's just like lines but it's fun yeah. it's very creative I used to really I would love the idea of having a small production to come up with an idea and say okay this should be a movie and someone says no that's not a movie that's actually a short story mm-hmm. or that's a book it's not a film or it's a short film or it's a web show no this is yeah. a mainstream commercial movie that should be 3d that's mm-hmm. the producer's kind of art if you can make True. that call how much money to put on this story you know yeah. which oh, I'm vision. not sure I never looked at it that way actually yeah. that is like a major call to take Right, and who to take and how to make it and yeah. how much to make it in. I said, no, 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 that's too much for like Bupolis, you know. Or you said, no, take them. Let's go to Himachal and shoot it and spend Bupolis money. Bupolis is the film that we're shooting for right now. It's a horror comedy and it's coming out next year. Mm. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we all need some more laughter and a horror comedy is perfect because I feel like oh the God, comedy and horror are just like great yeah, together. Yeah, they quite well together. Yeah. Oh god, it's <laughs> there's so much fun to make. Like honestly, like I'm on set all the time, just like laughing at Seth and like the ridiculous <laughs> things. Like, at you. <laughs> the acting is so good in this movie. <laughs> oh, I you, can't wait. Guess to what see I that. play? I play like a really crazy. Oh, I don't think I should be sure. Well, it's all right, but you play someone who's quite into selfies. I'm. I'm I love vlogging. Oh, <laughs> perfect. But I'm not a very successful one. But like I try really even hard. better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who, who is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah who's good exactly. at you know it's uh, teach their own <laughs> and, and, and everything's like yeah the, what what you your perception and what you put out there anyways like yeah i'm really really good i have so many followers like <laughs> yeah. it's all what you put out there but yeah so it's really crazy and we keep like we, we just do not get along in the film and so it's, it's well, we're kindred spirits yeah but we're two really corrupt <laughs> souls <laughs> but it's really funny i'm a little lower on the class scale yeah. <laughs> and i'm too classy 
happy for him. So yeah. I, you guys, I mean, you can see the chemistry already between you two though. And even for the movie, that's going to read really well in the show too. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see it, but I, I do want to know a little, cause I'm catching up here. Like even with you, Seth, I, so you're focusing on acting and producing, maybe going to do a book, uh, maybe. Maybe. Hopefully it's maybe. I think I think he's been convinced though already. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing the book. He's old. Done. He's still, yeah, he's I've still already old. started doing it. I just, I'm, it's already. He's, 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 like, it he's, he's thinking about that right now. He's not even like listening to us. <laughs> I will request that you make an audiobook version of it for me, so I could just like oh. listen to it instead, and just like. So and I love audiobooks. I love Seth's voice. Actually, yeah, yeah it's, it's like soothing. Unique, awesome Thanks. voice. That would yeah. actually. Be so you should do an audiobook. Yeah. I read out something Please. someone asked me to read time. out. Yeah, once upon a time. Well, I read to Tim. <gasps> oh, you read to him. Yeah. So lucky. He likes horror stories. Though. No. And if they're not scary, The Hook, that's that famous American horror story. Every kid's read The Hook. Well, mm. about Peter Pan? No, no. Yeah, well, the... I mean, there is a hook in right? Peter Pan too with the crocodile. He knows that story. That, that's what I thought it was. born not to go out at night and they go out to play in a car and they're told that this guy's escaped from a loony bin and he's got a social security bin anymore probably. And he's escaped mm -hmm. and he's, uh, and mm -hmm. you know, he doesn't have a left hand, he's got a hook instead. And then they hear the scratching sound of the car and they run away. And when they come back with their parents, the car's all scratched and there's a hook on the car. Ooh, okay, so we love that. Like, Are these his bed stories? Yeah, he likes it. And if you don't tell him a proper scary one, He's waiting in like, place. hello. And then he's like, that's not scary at all. <laughs> How am I supposed him. to fall asleep now? <laughs> Did you read him your script and just be like, all right, yeah, this is I what I'm going to tell him the story. And he said, that's good. Oh my yes. God. He approved. Very but good. On the internet, there's some ghost stories that are kind of um, constructive. So there's a guy, there's a knight, an Arthurian knight who's traveling around and he's in love with this servant girl and his father forbids him to marry her and has her disappear. And this guy's lost and he's wandering around and he seeks shelter in this kind of hut one night or in this castle or something and lights a fire and goes to sleep and this door flies open and this witch and this horrendous person is standing there. And, wow. you know, she says, I need a place to sleep. So he lets her in and he kind of looks after the witch and puts her to, because compassion is the key. And he puts her to sleep in and, and this place and she says, go and get me some wood for a fire and make my bed. And he does all this for her. And the next morning, she's transformed into that servant girl again, and she's beautiful. Oh. And he ends up married. She said, I was cursed that if anyone would show me true kindness, I would you know, go you back know, to normal. I so like, these are the stories that you I have like to tell. The there's actually always some form of darkness in fairy tales as well. There's always that, oh, yeah. well, they used to be that very dark. evil, you know, and obviously mm -hmm. love would conquer all and, you know, everything would be fine. But there was always like some kind of darkness and like kind of eerie as well when you look at it again yeah um, and you don't usually like, realize it until you get older and you look back and you're like oh that is twisted <laughs> like yeah, oh, what, what? <laughs> but yeah I, I love it it's like when yeah, i used to watch a lot of grim stories mm -hmm. uh, or hans christian Hansen, they particularly the brothers grim they yeah. get quite violent i mean a prince falls out of a tower and then scratches his eyes on uh, rose bushes and, and he's blinded yeah, gruesome, and, yeah. Yeah, quite gruesome. it's brutal. bloody I know. I like it's, it. <laughs> so that's your favorite genre to kind of, for acting, you enjoy horror films the most? No, no. I don't know what my favorite genre is, actually. It's just anything that's interesting. Really. He's, you shouldn't be repetitive. If you're lucky, I mean, you know, yeah. uh, to kind of get to, get to mix it up is great. I think you've done every single genre. I don't know. I don't know. You've I don't done know. love. You've done period films. You've done horror comedy. You've done comedy. You've done drama. You've done, um, have you done, no, wait, sci-fi? Sci-fi is not, no, not very- No, we haven't done sci-fi yet. Is it not very, it's not a very big genre here though. No. Really? It's not. Sci-fi, yeah. Maybe if-, if um, But you should. I think that- yeah. the, 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 make it big. We've been talking about sci-fi meets mythology in <gasps> India. So I think with this 3D and CG- Absolutely. <laughs> becoming really good. Yeah. I think we're getting there. Great. I think we're getting there. It's an exciting time. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like, honestly, like horror comedy as well was not a genre in the past. And then he did one of the first horror comedies, which I absolutely love. Go, I've always wanted go, to do Go, Goa, Gone. Mm -hmm. You have to watch this film, Amanda. It is hilarious. I'm waiting for part two. Yeah, I hope they make oh, it. Oh, I'm so hoping for part you two. You can make it. it. You're a producer. Yeah, Get in there. The right. He did oh. make it. <laughs> 
I didn't make it the first time. No, part two. <laughs> but it's, like, it's a zombie. It's a zombie film. And he plays a fake uh, Russian ma- mafia in Goa. Yeah, he's from Delhi. Pretending I loved to it. He was like this fake, yeah, fake <laughs> Russian. It was so <laughs> good. I've been to Goa <laughs> once before. Yeah? yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Do you enjoy it? Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. We know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. But no, it's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. But a you were here last year as well. <laughs> you were here last year. You went to Rajasthan, right? To, well, Why no, didn't was, we face that way? Yeah, that would have been a great. <laughs> no, Are you guys no. not facing the sun. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is actually yeah. <laughs> He's like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look great, though. I'm telling you. I know we're 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 a little bit shadowy. I think you're comparing yeah. yourselves to the fact that I have like lights and uh, you, have, you have nice lighting, but also we have a really nice view behind. You. We do. I know. I was showing you my view from from my room this morning. It was just like yeah, beautiful. it was gorgeous. Well, I yeah. hope you guys are having so much fun on set. I know we only. We have so much time with Steph today, but it was amazing hearing your stories. Like I wanna, I wanna see more from you, and I guess the only way I'm going to is through that book that you put out, so or your <laughs> movies that yeah. I can watch, <laughs> so or I could yeah. just like stalk you through Jacqueline. So one of the yes, yes that's yeah. always not <laughs> again or do shoot, I, shoot something on set. Oh and yeah, send it over. Yeah, I know. So yeah, oh, we please. will actually. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. we'll bring you to set. Yay! Yeah, so I <laughs> but thank you so much for doing yeah, this podcast. Nice time to chat, Not sure. No, I was really, yeah, I was actually really scared to ask him. I was like, oh no, like how do I ask? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy because like I mean, um, so many people look up to, you. and you're not on social media, so it's so great to actually like hear like you in interviews, and we get so little of you. Yeah, but I, you know, that's the thing. I mean, just because you're not on social media doesn't mean you're anti-social. No. I'm quite happy to have a chat and love doing <laughs> interviews and you know, all that. And, and I like people. It's just... You do? You like yeah, us? I do. Oh. I love you guys. <laughs> Yay! That's all we needed. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> We're all confidence now. boost. Well, I mean, Jacqueline, while you guys are on set, why don't you just like seed the idea of our movie? I mean... Ooh. Yeah. Hint, hint, nudge, we nudge, have, Seth. We have a producer here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. You guys have an idea for a movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Tell us. Mm-hmm. I will pitch it to you. <laughs> okay, wait. Before. Don't worry. Before, do you think we look like sisters? You guys definitely look uh, <laughs> similar. Yeah, like there's something you could be. He's like, well. Um, yeah, you could be sisters. You could be sisters. <laughs> like twins. <laughs> yeah, adopted. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but you know, if you do see, I've noticed if ladies do similar makeup, like there were decades in Indian cinema where the top makeup stylist would kind of do everyone, and everyone starts looking slightly similar. Girls can look similar if they do the same eyes and the same kind of. Are we hair. doing the same makeup? We got similar eye makeup. Do, we do, do, actually, we do, we do. Similar, we do have similar eyeliner. Yeah. That's yeah. a great observation. Wow, I have looked at girls before. <laughs> He knows oh, more about us than we know about us. Am I right? I'm right, right? <laughs> You're right. But he's, I never noticed that though. Actually, it's so true. We do. No? Yeah. It's Instagram. No. It's Instagram makeup. I'm trying and to look at your eyebrows. Everyone looked the same. Like, is that? So, like, you drive past a magazine store. You weren't 100% <laughs> sure who that was. You're like, is that so and so? Is that so and so? Oh, it's so true. It's like, it's like Halloween. <laughs> We're just stressing no, up as each say, other I mean, every day. She said that, not me. Thanks, Amanda, <laughs> for comparing us to Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like dress, it's it's dress up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Amazing. All righty. Thank you so much, My Seth, pleasure, for your time Absolutely. and What's doing fun? this segment with I've, us. I've got nothing to do now. I've got to hang out for a while. <laughs> oh, do you, do you want to hang Thank out? You. We're <laughs> keeping you? I'm prepped. I'm prepped. Oh, I'm prepped. We're having a lovely little barbecue tonight. Oh, we have to prepare your yeah. party. Yeah, we're having a little nice Diwali party tonight. Seth is throwing it. And uh, it's going to be, I, I think, a long night. No, so it can't, wait, can't possibly be. It can't, right? No. I agree. Because we're starting really early. Yeah. yeah I've I never I been. Where is off, though? Hmm? I've never been to a Diwali's uh, celebration. We'll send really... you lots of pictures. 
Okay. Uh, I also it's really the <laughs> nicest time. I think it's the nicest time of year in India. Everyone's in a good mood, and it's like nicely lit. And the big thing nowadays is. is to try and make it uh, a little eco-friendly and not burn too many fire. Actually, not burn any um, sort of crackers, crackers that mess up the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. I love issues. that. Yeah. Oh, so it's I lights, love that. More than yeah. Light. And you know, if you go to a small village in India, like I've driven through, and you know they're very poor and it's tiny and they're little mud huts but even they will put a few yes, um the what are they called not not just dias. Kind of dias but with these these kind of mud oil lamps um in the window you know and it just so looks sweet. so amazing yeah it's so charming that makes because me light so is happy. everything isn't it yeah. yeah oh light is everything without light we'd look at you with that light. Oh, this would, <laughs> <laughs> this would not be good this would not be good that's so true but, but Amanda, you're going to be where with us Where would we be spirit. without light? In the darkness. <laughs> it just sounds like Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah. Where would He's we a poet. Without light? In the dark, we'd be in, in the darkness. Without light. <laughs> oh. We'd be in the dark. That makes sense. You've never been away from your family during I'm, the I'm dark, sure right? I have, but normally we get a few days off and we go Head home. Down. Yeah, okay. A couple of days off, at least. Yeah. We try not to. It's an important kind of it time is. to be home and, you know, light that little dia in your own house. It's supposed and to be ritual. good luck and yeah. all that and say the prayers. Ooh, okay. So I guess this year it's a little bit different than every other year, right? Yeah, they're but coming to us, but I mean, you know, home is a suitcase and where your heart is. I mean, yeah. actually, it's so if your family's with you. Whoa. Sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <was> so scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's a party. Yeah. But they've done it. They've done it already. They've gone to and, and they really also, my wife's gone to her manager's office. Oh. She's the one who gets her all the jobs. And that's where they've done the main brand. Because <laughs> <laughs> money, money. So, yeah, that's actually, that was actually. It's very good. It's almost pagan. I love it. It's better than organized, you know. Um, it's, I it's love that than, too. Know, religion, yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun. I'm I so think jealous that out. of you guys. Would I do not. Yeah, I'm not, like, I, was, I made it's a mental note. So I'm like, no, this. you are not. No, I'm going to show it to you before. No, don't show it to me. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> show it to me. I was like, that one's going out for sure. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know how it is. <laughs> I, hey, I was saying preach over here. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I think that's so fun. I love, I, I mean, it's different than our 4th of July right? Like our independence say like, that's the only time that we're really lighting things up with like fireworks. No, you know what and- I think it's more, it's more Christmas. It's more Christmas. I would say. Yeah. Like Christmas lighting up the land. Yeah, it's, like it's like Christmas. It's like Christmas because it's got family, lights. The- yeah, that's true. Food, yeah, well, the presents and like- <laughs> hanging out. It's like, it's like our Christmas. I mean, that's my favorite holiday. So I guess so Wally excited. is also my favorite holiday. Yes. And things are actually cooling <laughs> down even in hot cities. Yeah, but you know a little what? bit like Australia and South Africa both have hot Christmases. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how that be. Florida, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's a little bit cooler in Florida, but it's still like muggy. It's, yeah, it's humid and it's like 70s, so it's like nice warm weather, 70 degree Fahrenheit. What is that Celsius? That's like I'm uh, conversion. 40? 40. Yes. 40. Maybe. Yeah, that's hot. I just said the hottest yeah. number. Like, I was like, whatever sounds hot. Sure. 40 yes. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So, but I was from, um, I was born in Pennsylvania, but I grew up in Connecticut. So that's like the Northeast of the U S and we had snow, like white Christmases cool. every year. And then I moved to Florida in uh, eighth grade. And then it just like, it didn't feel the same without a white Christmas, but I still I celebrate like hardcore. I love it. Uh, hardcore, <laughs> hardcore, hardcore Christmas, Christmas baby. <laughs> you should have seen her Halloween. Oh yeah, I'm sure this is the best it was hardcore. <laughs> I love holidays. I love celebrating. I love reasons you to celebrate. To. Yeah, there's yeah. a whole there's a whole concept where it kind of more than the the meaning of the thing itself is the family ritual is the, yeah. the idea of getting together, getting people and tradition, and kind of the, yeah. So it's crazy. Point. So Sri Lanka has the most amount of holidays in the world. It's the it's the country really? with the most amount of holidays. Yeah. So there's a, there's one um, holiday so cool. once a month when there's a full moon. So that's like like everything just shuts down. It's called a Poya Day, and it's like that's a good day for. 
Yeah. You know, the crazy thing about that is the full moon. I don't know if like you, you, it really affects us. Like it affects human beings. It affects like our being the way we are because of the water, the rise in water and the tides. And you, you think so? I've heard this. But no, it I'm is so. If it's true. It's, no, no, that, that's why when there's full moon, like even like the sea, everything gets affected because we're like 70% water. There is, it, there's a huge... Is it a menstrual cycle, Luna? N- well, no, it's, it's not. not. It's okay. not. But sometimes it does coincide and ooh, you don't like, want oh to know it's what happens. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's double whammy. Like, that's, that's where lunatic comes from, right? The word. <sighs> <laughs> yes. no, I'm telling you, it does, if, if you, if you'll notice, like on full moon nights, you might not Lunar, lunatic, period. Yes. Yeah. Generally. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it does. So there's a holiday every single month when there's a full moon over there. So, I mean, but it's, it's more of a holy thing as well. Um, I but wonder, like, yeah, there's a holiday for everyone. I, obviously you've heard of mercury retrograde, right? But I feel yeah. like it happens so often. I mean, this is a whole different situation, but every, ever since I was learning about it and figured it out, I'm like, okay, we're out of it now. And now we're back in it. Like, it's like every, yeah. it happens so often. And I'm I don't like, know if you, if you, if you follow the planets and like their readings and stuff, no, but it's do it, but not really, but I mean, you know, I've just heard like it destroys well. your like, this and, your days. I, I believe in it. Somehow something always yeah. dra- drastic and dramatic happens. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to stop paying attention to this because I feel like sometimes me paying attention to these things, I'm like putting the Attractors. energy out there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm bringing it into my own life. And I'm like, okay, like, let me not pay attention to the schedule unless it's really yeah. awesome. <laughs> like, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, I think like we've got our, um, I think we've got this segment. I think we do too. So Yay. let's give our outro. So yes, done. Go for it. What is this outro? Oh, oh, we have to announce our winner. Yay! We have a cash prize winner every episode, Seth. So oh. I, I don't know if you see that in front of you, but this is the comment that we got, the winning comment on our review. They give us five-star reviews. And if you want to read it, do yeah, sure. You want to read it? It's a good vibe podcast. Done. I read it. Others, I don't want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see what... Um, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are not great reviews. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate you. Feel like, like, but, uh, <laughs> okay, so this is this Mirogata? Mirogata. Okay, so her title was Felt oh, good. good, and this is what she said. Mirogata said, started my morning with, we're getting married. So good. It's like having virtual girlfriends. Got to learn about new places and new terms. Oh, you guys have such a nice vibe. Is that us? Well, That's, this is our last week's. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like it's about me. Or <laughs> it's not live. And you're like, <laughs> what's going on? It's like having virtual girlfriends. Yeah, <laughs> I what, love that. He's, he's like, thank yeah, you. Must have been like, wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. And what did I say? We're getting married. Yeah, like, <laughs> what am I going? myself into. I don't know. <laughs> the, it's quite funny. But this was yeah. last week's episode because we just we, we spoke about marriage. And um yeah so don't, that was told me I'm the first episode. <laughs> You're our first the guest. First, yeah. Oh <laughs> I see <laughs> He's, well, okay, I mean, he's in it together. <laughs> After this podcast, he's going to get off and be like, oh, What's going on? that's what happened. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> that's what it is. That, that's what it is. Why did I do fun. that? We were already done for a podcast. Yeah. That's what it is. is. Just confuse him. Oh. It's, it's good though. You, <laughs> yeah, you have a great lineup behind you. You got a lot of comedians behind you. You got a lot of actors behind you. Oh, for, for me, if you could live in any sitcom, which one would it be? <laughs> Two and a half men. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't ask me who I'd want to be though. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. What is the scariest thing you've ever done for fun? I'm sure frightening someone or dress, you know, getting no. someone to dress up as a monster. Scariest thing you've ever done? Like, yeah. have you gone like bungee jumping and stuff? No, no, like scared someone else or like that. That's um, the scariest thing? I guess something to do with maybe 
motorcycles or something. They weren't a bit scary. Bikes. Driving NASCAR fast. Oh, what is that? I did like, a movie, what? like those cars, the stock car racing. This, like, oh, Formula you went to, one. You that, was scary. that was scary. You went and to I North Carolina work. for that. Yes, and it was scary because you're strapped in and you're all locked is, are those in. Are the F1 cars? it's very hot. They're not F1. They're NASCAR cars, the like stock driving, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. But they're very hot the and they all open up so that when you drive fast, you're getting hit in the head with uh, fumes and hot. So I was very claustrophobic. And this guy oh, teaching yeah. me was, luckily there was a driver on the track and he looked across at me and he said, you all right? And I said, oh, we can't breathe. And he said, yeah, you got to want, you got to want it. No! <laughs> oh, it's true though. I just love great. He says, you got to want it, buddy. I was just thinking like, how and are they racing in that condition? You got to want it. Imagine so being the actual driver, though, because no, I I possibly. did that in a Formula One car too. Too, I was in the um the back, and yeah. then it was just like your whole body is oh. the whole time just you like, <laughs> and you're and like, like yeah, they have to work that, out with there's like, whiplash I saw, as well. I saw Schumacher work like, uh, working out with such heavy weights in On a video neck. with his, just to get his you know neck head, like yeah. even like yeah. the neck strong, right? yeah, yeah like mainly whiplash. the neck yeah. because you're just bouncing around like she said. Oh my God, yeah. that's crazy. Okay, there's another one here. If you could eliminate one thing from your daily routine, what would it be and why? It's probably some kind of a diet or say <laughs> eating something stupid, I'm sure, at some point. But you don't really eat something. No, I don't, but I do sometimes. I can, I'm kept, especially in hotel rooms. Oh my if God, I can't service? Sleep, no, if I, <laughs> mini bar, like not the alcohol, but I walk in there and just eat few crisps. It is super tempting. Pringles or something. Every I'm time you like, check yeah. in, just be like, hey, yeah. can you empty the check mini this bar? out. I've done that really often, and there's always yeah. something. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah. yeah, let's just mess with him. Leave yeah. him yeah. a little chocolate pie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> load it up. The or they give you, like, the welcome gift in your hotel room. It's just all chocolates and... Yes. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've got that here. Yeah, we did. We got, like, our little, like... Our, chocolate phone that says... The chocolate phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, from the, the our Instagram. It was, like, an Instagram page. Oh. Uh, like, our post. Okay. Is that from you? Yeah, it was from my Instagram. Are you serious? <laughs> such a kind so, hey, there's perks in Instagram, Seth. You gotta yeah, get, get in is, on there's it. There's some little beans to be made as well. Mm. Yeah, I made some money in lockdowns. See? My wife's on it. See, look and at that. they the got outside. me as a sucker actor. She at home. made money from, from social media without even being on social media. How yeah, clever yeah, is that? Yeah, but yeah, that is it, great. Don't have to be on it. <laughs> yeah, he's fake. He's well, cracked the code. Daughter, I mean, like, daughter, yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> this is the smartest like yeah. way to go ahead with it. I mean, I think this is the future. Well, Just since, like make money from it without being yeah. on it. I love it. Since you're so good at making money, um, if you had to wear a t-shirt with one, one word on it for one year, which would you choose? And you could sell these t-shirts. Peace. 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 Peace is good. Yeah. I like that. What, what ours, ours would be. Or jam. be kind. Guess, oh, wait, guess, that's two that words. Word? Two words. Yeah, that's two words. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's combine it. Maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, my, me and Amanda have got a word. Guess what our word is? Juice. Juice? What Why juice? Say? What did you say? Just I said jam. Jam. <laughs> Why jam? Well, so, half well, listening. <laughs> if you... <laughs> Half kind of listening. Yeah, half. You were, yeah, yeah, half I love <laughs> half listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, juice. Half listening. About it, <laughs> like, juice. I like juice. Juice and jam. Um, well, Jackie and Amanda make jam because Jay. Oh, I see. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's our couple How'd name. You know Amanda. So um, I reached out to Amanda on Instagram. Oh, you guys met on the gram. Mm -hmm. wow. On the gram. I know. In my true DMs. Romantic. Yes, I DM'd mm -hmm. her. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was coming to LA and I was like, I have to meet her because she just, she does the funniest, funniest skits. And sure. like, I've, I've followed her you know, on Instagram for ages and um, like truly a fan. But, but um, so yeah, like I just, I, when I was coming to LA, I was like, maybe I should message her. Should I try? I tried and she responded and she's like, yeah, cool. Let's, let's, let's meet up. Oh, nice. It makes the world smaller and it's lovely, isn't it? And we, yeah. we, we caught up for coffee you know, like that, you know, when we, when we got in and then mm -hmm. it was just from there, we've just been... Then like, I became a fan and, and I'm like, you will never <laughs> leave my I'm site. A fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, oh, a, fan I'm a fan. I'm a fan yeah. of jam. Damn fan of jam. jam. I know, jam. You guys should have merchandise. I know, totally. We need to start Someone that. Someone has to pay for it. Though. Step yeah. by step. Akepuri. 
talk about. We could talk about. I love how like nobody knows who Akshay Puri is. Yeah. You've brought his He's name in here three times. Yeah, he can he can pay for it, and you can interview booth police people. Oh, for the jam. For the jam. Yeah, like a, just a show. Why don't you do a show it. to publicize movies? Oh, there you go. Oh. Oh. Like, you want to publicize? Your and I'd have. Movie. I know. I was like, "Would it be able to do that, though, or is that a?" Like, you guys must this watch really this movie featuring Jacqueline Fernandez. Let me help you. I can be like the jam interviewer if you want. <laughs> no, but this I is want great. A hat. I want a baseball hat. Though. Why? That says jam. done. Oh yeah. Well, you will do caps and t-shirts. I, I think okay. he's starting to produce our podcast. Oh. Oh, his natural just instincts just are coming in. We got him just where we wanted him. Yes. <laughs> Mission accomplished. And then it will be a movie. <laughs> Look at step us. by step. <laughs> Before Seth knows that there's movies. How did that happen? What am I doing? <laughs> yes, uh, I just right signed this, this dotted line right here. You already signed wow. it. You already I've signed, already signed it. it. You had no idea. Virtually. Ink appears. We have you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. I'll do it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Success. <laughs> I mean, you heard it here first, folks. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> this is good news. We're going to title our episode next week. We yeah, got a movie. New Bollywood <laughs> film. New Bollywood meets Hollywood produced film. Coming our, first, over. Produced by, Cross by our first together. ever celebrity guest. It's hap- <laughs> It's when they collide. So It's, it's happening. It's happening. It's, it's boho. Boho. Yeah, Hollywood. Boho Productions. Boho. Hobo. Boho oh. Productions. A jam movie. <laughs> We're killing it. <laughs> we, just need some, we just need some cash now. <laughs> Akshay Puri. <laughs> Akshay Puri. Akshay Puri finances a jam production. Let's get him on our Boho show film. next week. Week, Amanda. Let's get Akshay Puri on our show. You know, this be podcast has been guest. super productive. Discussing Bollywood. Yeah. Okay. And then by the end of it, we'll have a m- movie. I think you should do it. Get him on. That's I want to, I'll come and do what he's doing. <laughs> The truth is, yeah, this podcast. I want to watch. Yes, that's what he's been doing. I'm just sitting in the corner laughing. This podcast is just a promotion for our future movie. Yeah, I mean, that's all this is. Yeah, I see that. I know where, I know where, I know where it's going. Just to make things clear. Yeah, yeah. Not. To, yeah, I'm always up front. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, another question from our fans. Since you, oh. you gave us more time, so we're really yeah, middle sure. know. time here. All right, cool. Let's just do like let's do one more, and yeah. then. Oh, this is the last one I made. Oh, oh, would you rather be able to talk with animals or speak all foreign? These are from our, your fans, by the way. Would you rather be able to talk with animals or speak all, all foreign languages? Wow, that's a really good question. That is and a I, tough one. I don't know how to answer that. Animals. Well, can I speak like 10 languages and to 10 animals? <laughs> I mean, no, split it up. No, uh, no I think I would no. rather... Uh, oh my gosh. I think I'd rather speak to animals. Yeah! Same. Because, you know, languages yeah. are all the same. They're just, you know, different versions of the same And that thought. is definitely something you or, can learn. And if you want to speak. But this is a slightly this different is a perspective. Superpower. Unless it's a really boring conversation with like a chicken where you say, <laughs> what's up? And he says... I'm not reaching this thing. <laughs> you was like, what else? It's yeah. nothing else. It's all yeah, like, we've all hey, seen you on it. And you're like, damn, I should have taken What's 10 languages. I know. Like, they just don't I come I could have back. spoken Mandarin. <laughs> I'm stuck here talking to you about eating feed on a farm. <laughs> That's all you know. Like, they're just not interested in talking damn to it. us. <laughs> yeah. I would just try. And what if different, I wonder if different animals around the world, this is a deep late night thought for me, guys. Whoa. I wonder if animals around the world speak different languages, like in, like a dog in different, parts, in different countries. Yeah, yeah. Like a dog well, what, in LA. Know, of course they would. What is a different language? It's the same thought expressed with different sounds, right? From from yeah. the community that you're. So the the idea is that you don't have like different, different ideas. Different. Mm-hmm. Ideas are not different. Mm-hmm. Like a yeah. Chinese person won't say, you know, the tea is on the table. I mean, that's the, the same yeah, idea. Exactly. Right? So it's just different sounds. And like from different communities. Yeah, there would be. Oh, but so maybe if- rivers sound the same everywhere. Um, what sounds the same? Rivers and trees sound, I mean, like wind. Yeah. So they say accents are based on, like I read something. Your environment. Yes. Like someone lived near the river and it had some smelly fish in it or people caught fish and they became so they smelly. They were nasal? So they were more nasal <laughs> because they were smelling a lot of, you know. He's totally adding to yeah, our fun yeah. facts. Like, this is actually fun. 
Right. Well, right. Seth, can you tell me where my accent, like what was my environment? From my no, I can't. But you told us. I didn't say you, you told sound us. like someone who started off you know, in the northeast of America <laughs> and uh, then probably went good. down south to warmer climes. I could I, wow. Oh way. my God. How did yeah. you know? Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is about those Irish or those kind of, you know, very strong accents are sometimes governed by environment. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, because everyone sounds so distinct, right? I mean, yeah. like, people in the desert sound different from people living in an island and people. So it's. it's Bombay is like, oh my God, it's really hot. <laughs> 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 no. I keep getting in trouble. Cancel. Can't say anything. I, no, I froze. I was like. Like, I. <laughs> <laughs> on this podcast, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> well, no, but people, people on the island, people on the island actually have very singy songy, um, like voices and accents. Like, yeah, they will. They sing their. I want to go you know, so part. bad. I've never been to Ireland. I really want to go. I was going to go for my birthday this year, but then it's a pandemic. I nearly went to, oh. nearly went to D- Trinity College Dublin, which is quite nice. A really nice place. Ireland's beautiful. Ireland, I'm, and the I'm walks and nature is amazing. Also, what's that one movie I watched it and just made me want to go? It's always P.S. I love that you. Me... The Devil's yes. Own. P.S. Yes, I love yes, you. I love you. Oh. <laughs> the Devil's Own. Yeah, oh no! <laughs> what is that? It's IRA guy. In Ireland? Yeah, the oh, IRA okay. starts off in Dublin. Sounds Belfast. like a horror film. It was back in the yeah, it was a war zone. Did you see oh, P.S. Okay. I Love You though? <laughs> it's very like different. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We're like, P.S. I love you, the devil's advocate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you seen P.S. I love you? I'm not watching P.S. I love you. No, I'm not going to watch it either. Oh my God, it's so good. Yes, it's like sure. heart Come wrenching. on. Come on. Yeah. You'll, maybe you'll no, cry. I'm not oh, I bet you'll cry. cry. I, I bet you cry. you'll cry. I know. I, cry. Bet you. I don't want to cry. I get very scared of crying. <laughs> oh, that answers it. our other question. Yeah, what? What, what was what the other question? What were you afraid of? What scares well, you? Crying. Crying. Uh, cockroaches. Cockroaches. Mm. Oh. Yeah, cockroaches uh, 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 in, in, in continents. In continents. I have a terrible uh, story about that. In continents? In continents, like when you, when you can't control going to the loo. <gasps> oh, I didn't know it was called that. Uh, it's one of the beauties of in continents. You know, getting older. You could look forward to that. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Already there. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm already there. In continents. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta go. <laughs> I did yeah. take a bathroom break in our I other podcast. Like this, I'm <laughs> yes, in continents. New word for the day. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Well, we learned so much from you. We don't need we Google. Did. We have some. Yeah. We don't need fun facts section segment. We, have Seth. we had Seth. Seth. It's time for Seth. Yeah, Yay. fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you'll never want to come to Florida because we have flying. I like being to Florida quite often. Have you I seen can't cockroach? handle that. It's too. You know, once I was watching TV at home and I had the window open in Lokanwala in Bombay, and I was watching TV and I felt something land on my knee, and mm. I really thought it was a very light little fly because it was so soft <laughs> oh my so god light. and oh i just while god. watching tv i just like looked at my knee and this big cockroach that big and i went ah. oh yeah i c- i start to cry <laughs> i start to I cry no, I, I, I would also start crying <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's but no i start to cry when you don't see where they went like if you saw it and then it's gone because then we have ones that fly where is it i can't it's- sleep yeah, I yeah. Can't sleep. I'll have to rip up all the furniture and kill Same it. Same thing with spiders. Spiders. But do you have like uh, nets on your windows to stop that happening? Mosquito nets? Yeah, I can. Oh, or yeah, like the I'm jolly. Like, yeah. No, no? <gasps> you just let them get Come right on in. in. <laughs> You're welcome. Are they are they so quite good looking or are they like not good looking cockroaches? They're ugly. Ones. They're very ugly. Are they big? Super big. This is thing I was large. in the airport once shooting and there was a locust kind of attack and the first lot of locusts were quite scary, biblical, They're scary huge, looking. Right? Yeah. yeah. But a week later, these I very good looking green ones arrived that were not as disturbing at all. Was this mm-hmm. the uh, was this during quarantine? No, it's long. Because there was a locust yes. yeah, there was attack, a locust right? Isn't that really weird? weird? Yeah, very biblical. <laughs> yes. Because like so many Weird things were happening, and then like all the rapture came the locusts. We have the migration yeah. of the butterflies. Plague, locust, what else? The great migration? What? Of what? <laughs> <laughs> the butterflies. 
A uh, butterfly? Yeah, it's Michael. all monarch butterflies just like flying down the roads, like oh, thousands wow. of them. Beautiful. Yeah. Was it, was it, I was like, what is this? That would be beautiful. Butterflies, like their colors and their wings. The monarch butterfly is probably quite big. Oh, oh. Well, they're, mean, they're like, the orange ones, right? But how big are they? <laughs> Come on, the butterflies, no matter how big they are, they're not scary. That big. <laughs> <laughs> there are butterflies that big. Moths. Moths are scary. Yeah. Moths is yeah. Yeah. Moths, poor guys. Can't do it. Like butterflies are so beautiful and then there's like there's moths. You but know? that story <laughs> about the lotuses really made me think about the cockroaches and how I said they're all ugly. You know, maybe I just need to give them a chance. I know. No, no they're quite scary okay okay so good like, yeah, that I is that <laughs> yeah exactly this is positive this feels good oh we're, we're... salman rushdie wrote this lovely short story <laughs> or book i mean in the satanic verses about this lady who's just covered in butterflies and she's you know this where the king sees her and he falls in love with her and there's this very descriptive beautiful writer but he writes this lovely piece about butterflies oh but good hire him for a movie yeah, he's, he gets hired to write movie scripts. <laughs> is it, is it, is it it's a com- compilation of different writers or is this? No, this is his book, The Satanic Verses. Oh, I don't think that. banned. Yeah. That's when the Ayatollah Khomeini, a popular chap in America, um, <laughs> he, put a, he passed a fatwa on him. Yeah. And his life changed. He, was, he had to change his name to Joseph Anton. And who, that Mahalik. guy who put the fatwa on? No, no, on Salman Rushdie's life. Oh. It was, Wait, what it it, put a what on a what? There, is the, there was an Islamic death sentence passed by the Ayatollah Khomeini, the, the spiritual leader of Iran. Mm-hmm. You know that movie, Argo? Argo, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's the guy who kind of, you know, hates America, the great Satan. Mm. Oh, um, so, they, so basically, and a fatwa is where, like, you get banned because you've gone the against... Death sentence. It's, oh, it's... So that's okay, yeah, because you've gone oh, okay. again. Well, he did write that, you know, that, oh. that, that the best yeah. brothel in the world was in Mecca and, and, you know, the women are named after sort of wives of the prophet or something. Wow. <laughs> so it didn't go down too well. No. <laughs> yeah. So he changed his name. He had to change his name to Joseph Anton, which are uh, named after two of his favorite writers, uh, Joseph Conrad and uh, Anton Chekhov, who's a Russian playwright. Oh. Um, and his book, he's written an autobiography called Joseph Anton. And, and do, do people know his whereabouts? Does he get... Like, he's cool now. He's in, in, in India. I mean, and he's in England. And it's fine now. Oh. He's lifted oh. and all was forgiven and everything was okay. But for many years, everyone was with sort of special security in London and his life changed. Wow. wow. That is scary. Yeah. There's so many books. Again, it's not very happy. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Time to party. Yeah, so you guys go have <laughs> so Diwali. much fun for Diwali. Make sure that... Diwali. Diwali. Did I say it? No, but you said it right. No, no. Yeah, it's Diwali. Say oh, verb. Shit. Verb for but, verbiate. Because it's pronounced Diwali. I mean, Vermont. It's, it's Diwali. Spelled for the v, w. v for Vermont. Diwali. Yes. Diwali, yes. Diwali. Have fun celebrating Diwali. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah. Well Diwali. Diwali. And Diwali. you too, light a candle. And you too, light a candle for us. Oh, I will. I love candles. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Happy. You got one. Oh, oh my God. Nice. Bali. Spread the light. Oh, that looks like a nice candle. Is that a charcoal candle? I don't know. They sent it to me. It's a charcoal. Pretty. What's a chocolate? Oh, it smells so good. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. Well done, Amanda. Yay! My first <laughs> Diwali celebration. Happy Diwali, Happy Diwali. everyone. Lovely. Awesome. Happy Diwali. I can't wait to see the post from you, Jacqueline. Seth, I'll oh. live. I'll wait for your videos. All right. I've got it ready. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I just, I'll, I'll send it to you now. Just have a look at it. Oh, cool. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Yay! Done and All done. Right, cool. I love it. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so nice much. Bye, everyone. Bye, you Take too. Care.